In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a refer URL, your Elementor form, and your contact form 7. Now, this isn't just going to grab the refer URL that the visitor previously was on or the page that they were previously on. It's going to show the original URL when they first entered your website. So basically, the URL that they came from originally from either Google, Yelp, or whether it was direct, they directly typed it into the browser. That is what you're going to be getting whenever someone submits a form on your website, right? So let me get into this a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. As you can see here, I have my form. So whenever someone fills this out, um, I'm going to go into my submissions for Elementor here. And you can see that we have this refer URL and it lets me know that this is the original URL. Whenever they first entered my website for the first time, this is the URL that they came from, right? Um, and we're able to do this with some custom JavaScript. And we're basically going to save it in local storage and it's going to save for about 30 days and then it's going to expire. And then if the visitor were to come after 30 days again, we would know where it came from. So. That is what you're going to be learning today. One last thing before I wrap this up, if you need help setting up the code snippet on your website, so this works, you can go ahead and click the link down in the description and put it in order. And I'll help you guys out. Um, in case you're having a lot of difficulty, just want someone to install it. I can definitely do that for you guys. If you happen to find the video helpful, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. So you don't miss out on any of my videos just like this one i hope you guys enjoy let's go ahead and begin here so i'm going to start off with elementor and then towards the end of the video i'm going to be doing contact form 7. now you can apply this method to pretty much any form you just have to add a hidden field so let's begin um first of all let's go ahead and just edit our elementor form here and of course you're going to need elementor pro to have um the elementor form so i already have this form created on my website here I'm going to go ahead and just add a new item. Make sure you click on your form. And then go ahead and add hidden. We want to give this a label. We're going to do um, refer underscore URL. And let's copy this here. Paste it for the ID. And leave it like this. And I'm going to put this right under my message. So when I view the code, I can see that it's right there. So let's hit update. Okay, now that is set up properly. Now, one thing we have to do before we go into adding our code here, our custom um, JavaScript to make everything happen. Um, I'm going to hit inspect and you may not need to do this part if you're using Elementor, um, but just so then you know where to get the name of your field of your hidden field. So if I hover over this, we can see the input is right here. It's hidden and we can see that the name called form underscore fields. Um, then it has those brackets and refer URL. Um, so you will grab this. You will probably not need to grab this if you name the same. So don't worry about that. But I'm just going to grab this now there and I'm going to save it for bigger. OK, so let's go back here. to Our dashboard and we want to go into Elementor custom code. And I had kind of have this one here, but I'm going to remove it. And then we're going to add, go ahead and click add new. We're going to call this um, append refer URL to form. And then where we want to load this is on the body end because we don't want that slowing down the website there. So from here, go ahead and paste or code that I've provided in the description. And then what we want to do is add what we copied earlier. Now this for Elementor will already be provided anyway, because you're going to probably be using the same name. Everything is going to be the same there. All right, so now that's looking good. And I'll go over this code a bit towards the end of the video in case for those of you that want to learn more about it. Um, but the real parts that we need to focus on um, are going to be the specific pages that we want the script to load on. Obviously, we want the script 
load on every page because we wanted to grab the initial refer URL uh, where they came from. And just to kind of go over this a little bit, uh, basically the script is going to go ahead and save um, the original URL that the user came from, that the visitor came from, and save that to local storage, which is like cookies. Um, and that will expire every 30 days, as you can see, we have it here. Um, but it's going to save that in local host. So it doesn't really matter what page the visitor goes on. It's always going to have that original refer URL until they hit the submit um, form and that gets sent to you and you can see where they came from. So um, we want to load this on specific pages. So for instance, on this page here that I'm loading this on, this is called the contact dash us, right? So I'm going to paste it in here. And it's very important to have these lines here at the end. These are super important. Um, make sure you have these here. Okay. Very important that you have that and that you don't just remove one and have it like this because it will not work. Um, so make sure you have each of the lines here. And if you have to have a dash in between um, for your page, that's fine. Just like this. Okay. Now I added these other ones, just an example. You can of course remove these because we're not going to need them. Um, and you can just have it like this. That will totally work in case you're going to load it on um, just one page there. But let's say for some reason you have a form on every page. What you can do is just remove this here and then you're just going to want to remove this if statement and remove that bracket um, under it there and just have it just like this. That's if you have the form on every page and you just want it to load every time um, on the website. But for this case, we only have it on the contact us page. So now that we have that set up and I've explained this portion here, we can go ahead and click on publish. And if you go into the contact form, we, it will probably tell us where we came from, but I'm going to go into incognito. So I'm going to go to Google real quick, and I'm just going to search for the contact page. So I know where it came from. I already cleared my cache there. So that's all looking good. But I just landed on here. So I'm going to go ahead and check that this hidden field has that refer URL. And I know that it's under here because I added it. I added the hidden field under my um, text area message there. So if we go in here and go to hidden, we can see that the value for this hidden field is Google, right? And even if I go to any other page on here, I go to home, I go to about, and then I go back to contact because usually users or visitors uh, navigate throughout the website there. Um, you would think it would change, but if we go in here, we can see that it's still going to be the same because it gets saved in local, uh, local storage there. So if I go to applications and I click on local storage and click on the website name, you can see that we have the key initial uh, refer and we are going to have the URL in there. So the URL when we want it to expire, right? Um, so that, yeah, that's there. And if you want to even delete it and then um, test it out, you can. That's a way that you can do that. I don't want to spend too much time here, um, but it's just there. So now if I were to go ahead and enter this information, let's even just test this out now so we can see that it works. Test. And we're going to do a test at com. I have a fake number there. Um, we're going to do test message, send it. So let's go into our dashboard and let's make sure that this worked. Go into uh, Elementor submissions. And we can see that we have it here and we can see that the URL is in there. And that worked perfectly. And of course, this is going to be sent out um, to your email if you have it set up. Okay. So uh, towards the end of the video, I'll be going over the code a bit more. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and start with the contact form seven. So first of all, make sure that you have contact form seven installed. And then go into your contact form. I'm just using the default one here. Um, so we need to go ahead and add a hidden field. So the way you go ahead and do that is hit X here. Uh, just give this a name. We're going to call this uh, refer. Refer underscore URL. And then we're going to go ahead and hit insert. We don't really need this text here. Just call this hidden. That should work already. Save. And we want to make sure that we add it to our mail here. As you can see now, it's included in here. So let's grab this. Make sure we include it in our messages here. That's super important. Hit save. And then go into pages. And make sure that you have it in your, in your uh, contact form or your contact page, I've already added it in here. I'll be going over that part a bit more later. Um, but before we go into that, let's go ahead and paste 
um, the code. And for those of you probably not using Elementor, so you can go ahead and download um, one of the code snippets. For this example, I will use this one here. Let's hit activate. And let's go into code snippets, header and footer. Okay. So really we want to just paste this script under here in the footer. So I'm going to grab my script that I have. And we're going to do some changes here. We're going to have to do some changes. So in the code here, I can't expand this too much. Um, but basically what we're doing is, so whenever a visitor first visits a site, we want to go ahead and grab the URL that they came from, which is a refer URL. And we want to go ahead and store that in local storage, which is sort of like cookies, but it's for JavaScript. And the reason why we want to store it in local storage is because the visitor might navigate around the website and that URL, that refer URL could get lost. So that's why we want to store it in local storage. Um, and that's what we do here. And we go ahead and expire that every 30 days. So every 30 days, it's going to just erase in case um, you're running a campaign and you want to see if they came from somewhere else. Um, so that's going to expire every 30 days there. Um, I'll go over this code a bit more towards the end. Um, but the other part that's very important um, that we want to go over is first of all, we want to go ahead and grab the input name of that hidden field. So let's go. Um, let me go back and go into pages here. Don't worry about this portion here. That was when I was doing the Elementor portion. Um, so I'm going to go into this page here. And I'm going to hit edit. And I'm going to view the page. And I'm going to right click it. Now you will probably not need to do this because you will already see the name of the uh, hidden field. So if I hover over this one, I know that it's going to be under here. So it's going to be this one here. We can see that it's hidden, right? And that the name is called the refer URL. So what we're going to do is go back to our code here and type that in. Okay, we're going to type in refer underscore URL, just like this. Okay, just like that there. And then the other thing that we have to do is go ahead and add um, the, the pages that the form is being loaded on. So for our example, we're only loading um, a form only on the contact page. So I'm just going to grab this URL here. And I'm going to paste it in here. And I do want to note that it's very important that you have the lines at the end of each um, pathway here. So make sure you have these two lines at the end of your page here. So you have whatever the name of the page is. You could even have a dash if that's the case. And then you have these two lines at the end. That's super important. Okay. In my case, I don't, I'm not loading the form on any other page, just a contact page. So I'm going to leave it like this, right? Um, in case you have a form loaded on every page and you just want it to load up on every page, um, you can just remove this. That's not important. And then you can also just remove the if statement and then the, the closing bracket there. Okay. And you can load it up just like this. And that works too, in case you have the form on every single page. Um, but I have it like this. So now that we have that set up, I'm going to hit save changes. And we can test this out. So um, let's go ahead and click inspect here. Let's refresh this first of all. And let's see if the URL has a value there, that hidden one, right? So we can see now that it does, right? Now it does have this edit because that is where I originally came from. But let's go into my application, local storage here. I have a few, um, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the initial refer, I believe it's called here it is, I'm going to remove this one. So then I can get a different link. So let's go to Google here and just type in the website there. You can see here, I'm going to go into the page here. Now we'll save my initial URL there. So I should be fine. So now I believe if I go to the test, the contact test page, and I hover over this, it should have the original one, which is Google. See here. Now, if I were just, if a user were to put um, the URL directly into the browser, it would go ahead and let you know that the refer URL is going to be direct. And I have that in the code here. So as you can see, right? Um, so that's how you'll know if they just inputted the URL directly into the browser and didn't really come from Google or Yelp or anything like that. Um, now that's it for setting that up. I do want to go ahead and go over the code there. 
Um, so let me open this up on Elementor code. Just so then we can view all of it. And I'll go over this briefly, very quickly. So, all right, first of all, we have an event handler, an event listener, which is going to go ahead and load when the document object model um, is loaded, which is a DOM. And it's basically just your HTML page. Whenever that's loaded, um, it's going to go ahead and run these functions, right? Um, so first of all, we have our function here, um, the save initial refer. This is going to go ahead and save um, the refer URL that you get from the user. Um, if they came from a website or not, if they didn't, then it's going to go ahead and just add a, add a direct to this variable here. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and create a um, object with this information. And then it's going to store it um, on local storage uh, with the key initial refer. And it's going to go ahead and stringify it um, for JSON there. And it's going to store it. Okay. And then from here, uh, this function here is going to go ahead and get the saved refer. Um, so it's pretty much just going to grab the uh, URL from local storage. And it's going to go ahead and append it there. Um, and then right here, we have the set refer um, in form field. This is going to go ahead. Uh, let me remove this console.log because that's not really important here. Um, this is basically going to set um, the refer URL to that hidden field, right? So if there is a refer URL in local storage, it's going to grab that, which it should be. And then it's going to go ahead and find that hidden field here. Um, and then it's going to check if, it's, if it actually does exist. And then it's going to append it going to add it to the value there as a refer. Um, and then basically, we're just loading these functions here. So as soon as the website loads, um, the DOM is loaded there. And then it's going to go ahead and load this function here, it's calling this function, um, which was going to go ahead and save it to the to local storage, we're going to go ahead and have our pages that we want it to be loaded on. Um, and then here we have an if statement, checking whether the specific pages here, if it includes what what the user's current window uh, path, which is their current page that they're on, if that's active, and if it is included, it's going to run the set refer uh, inform field, which is this one, which will save it and basically append it uh, to that hidden field. Um, hopefully that made some sense. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions on this. I just felt like this was really interesting. Um, so hopefully this video wasn't too long. Uh, if you did enjoy it and you found it valuable, make sure you like the video for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Thanks for watching.